Okay, so today we're going to talk about the history of graphic design. When did it all start and where is it going? So graphic design itself is considered the art or skill of combining text and pictures in advertisements, magazines, or books. A little bit more modern version of the definition is the practices or profession of designing print or electronic forms of visual information as far as adv advertisements, publications, or now they include websites. The earliest known versions of graphic design they said was cave drawings, but according to the previous definition when it talks about text, no, there wasn't really any text in cave drawings, but it might be the first version of recorded illustrations. But the invention of paper was from the Chinese. Their pictures or their cuneiforms, um, those were the, their writings and drawings of their symbols of text and whatnot. Um, those were definitely on paper, but there wasn't really any illustrations. They were intended to be symbols that represented words. Then we get the ancient Celtic writings, which did start to include um, any of the uh, print medias and, and illustrations that come with text. Then we go to the movable type. That too was brought about by the Chinese. As you can see here, we've got the little these things would would be pulled out and then they would be set in this little um, brick or um, wooden frame to hold it all together and remember that they read Chinese well maybe you know maybe you don't know but they read uh, top to bottom not left to right so then uh, Johann Gutenberg finally in print, invented the printing press to make the movable type a little bit faster and then Albert Fischer ended up putting illustrations with text. Nicholas Jensen decided he was going to create a Roman typeface. If you kind of look back here on this guy, you can see these uh, characters and the text that are in here. This is called black letter. Um, it's more, uh, people might refer to it more specifically as calligraphy. So then Nicholas Jensen decided to, to create more of a standard Roman typeface. So any of these texts that you see on this page is considered a Roman typeface. That it's not the calligraphy and all that kind of stuff. It's just plain old text is what we see it today. So then Claude Gehrman decided he was going to capitalize on this opportunity and he's going to start selling typefaces. Again, they're handset letters that, they, that would go on in those printing presses. So Kazan Old Style font was developed and it was used for the Declaration of Independence in 1776. And then comes about sans serif fonts in 1816. Now sans serif, these little feet at the bottom of these, each one of these letters is called a serif. And the best way I can use to remind you how to, what they are, is you think of the sheriff that sounds like, like serif. He has to get out of his car and walk on his feet to get to your car to give you a ticket. Sans, the word sans means without. So if I'm going to the grocery store sans kids, I'm going without my children. So a sans serif font means that it doesn't have any feet. So then the Industrial Revolution came about and we see offset lithography. And if you are watching this as a video, I will hyperlink this in the assignment so that you can get access to this offset lithography. Actually, I don't think I need to do that because in the student version, you should have the link. So you should be able to see that. So the Industrial Revolution brings about this offset lithography. And what it does is, this is a plate. And we're actually going to have an, a little project that we're going to create uh, our own little version of a plate. And then the paper comes through here. So this plate transfers the image to this blanket cylinder. So as the paper comes around here, it transfers that image onto that piece of paper and then it comes back around here to the to the sheet transfer cylinder and then now you have a printed image. So this is in the negative and then it refers reverts to the positive on this side and then by the time it actually page actually comes up with it, now you've got the printed image. Art Nouveau is the style of lavishness. So you notice all of the 
swashy hair and all of that kind of stuff. That was in 1890 to 1910, and you still see a little bit of it within um, some places in the French, and um, sometimes in New Orleans, uh, you see the little fleur-de-lis and stuff that they still use in, in their decor down there. So what is graphic design? W.A. Dwiggins was the first person to call himself a graphic designer. So he was the one that coined the phrase in 1920. And he defined it as a specific practice of graphics where you're adding pictures and text together. So these are some of the works that he had come up with, some of the fonts that he helped design. But the best way, another one of these things, trying to help you remember how to think of who these people are. I always remembered him as his hair is kind of dwigging out. So W.A. Dwiggins was the first graphic designer. So propaganda posters, they came about with um, the World War II. Um, every country has, its, has used propaganda posters in one way or another. And so we started out with the, the buy the war bonds. We needed those kind of things to be able to help fund the war. Um, they needed ammunition. They needed tanks. They needed airplanes. They needed guns. They needed all kinds of different stuff like that. And of course, Uncle Sam, hopefully you guys have learned about this in your history, Uncle Sam posters, the I want you for the U.S. Army. So it wasn't just men that they were looking for. They were also looking for women. They needed at the time. They, they didn't, they were not, were not infantry, but they were the nurses. They were the support staff. They were the secretarial. They were any number of different things, but they also needed them in the warehouses and in the in the factories because the factories of um, trucks and you know making cars and making all kinds of different industrial stuff at the time they converted those all of those factories into um, making you know instead of making cars and that kind of stuff they uh, converted them so that they were making airplanes and they were making tanks and they were making all of those different things that we needed to be able to supply for our soldiers. So then came about the printed design. Offset lithography progress progresses to 100 dots per inch, which is a half-tone screen. And the way that this printing works is that each one of the different screens is it's just basically a bunch of dots, kind of like this guy right here. But it's all a bunch of different dots really close together, and then it sh it um, they are all at different angles. So the, these ones go straight across this way, but the next one might go at a 15 degree angle, and a third uh, 45 degree angle, and then a I think it was a 75 and a 90 or something like that. So um, those will we'll show you those in one of the next slides coming up here. Okay, so. Um, in 1993, Paul Rand famously distilled the essence of his profession of the profession of graphic design to include um, to design is much more than simply to assemble or to order or even to edit. It is to add value and meaning, to illuminate, to simplify, to clarify, to modify, to dignify, to dramatize, to persuade, and perhaps even to amuse. To design is to transform prose into poetry. So a simple version of this is to understand that graphic design, your job as a graphic designer is to get information to people in the most efficient and pleasing manner that will draw their attention to get them to be able to read it. But for example, if you're driving down the street, a billboard should be able to be read and the message gotten across within three seconds. So people are driving by, they don't have time to be looking at billboards, but they will take three seconds to be able to look away from the road to be able to read different billboards. So efficiency and design. So printed graphics. Graphic design has been traditionally all done in print, including posters, banners, flyers, business cards, t-shirts, and the like. Back when I was in school, it was done with drafting tables, glass-topped drafting, drafting tables is what we had because these exacto blades and the rulers, the exacto blades would glide across the top of the glass and we would be able to have a, a sure feeling as to how thin the, the film was that we were cutting to, that would be going on a printed page. So graphic design around the world in India we see things such as um, the representation, if you will, of the tapestries that they create. They are very well known for very um, high quality 
rugs and so those type of things are the tapestries and stuff that you see that's included in their design. So in Japan, there's it's more of a traditional country and their graphics represent simplicity, elegance, and precision. And it comes from different ink paintings that they use or the woodblock prints. And they also include, of course, any of the different flowers and stuff from their, from their country. Graphic design around America is very much representative of the melting pot that America is of all the different cultures of people that live within the borders. From pop art, this is pop art of the early 1970s. Um, and it goes to the more fancy, not really fancy, but more of a digital noise kind of sort of type of stuff that you see here, all the way down to now what we see as a more um, minimalist, simplistic, um, cutting edge digital techniques and stuff that we see from Apple and you might see it from Nike and all those type of things. So the European still reflect some of the, like I said, the the Art Nouveau and the flourish and, and that kind of stuff that they incorporate into their work um, that comes from the Baroque typography, um, clean Swiss modernism. It embodies the creativity, sophistication, and culture exchanges from all of the different countries that border um, any of the European countries, um, London, Paris, Berlin, any of that kind of stuff. And then we have the Africans, um, Africa being um, just a continent and there's multiple different countries within the, the continent of Africa. So that too is very similar to what you would see within the United States as so many different um, types of people and, and cultures within that those borders that also influence the, the graphics and stuff that come out of there. It includes their beadworks from different tribal areas and then the rich cultural heritage and creativity. So some of the main hubs of the African continent include Nairobi, Kenya, and Cape Town, South Africa. The digital age though has exponentially sped up the developments in graphic design to include the use of computers and software such as what we will be learning in Graphic Design Pathway, um, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign. And the digital diversion, today's products seem desirable and useful for consumers, but in the past it was based off of basic elements of composition and making the product simply catch your attention. With new technology of today, designs are made easier and smoother and more attractive due to the cleanliness, sharp crisp lines such as this. So it's a lot harder and not a, or a lot um, noisier, I guess you could say, where it's not just as hard and crisp and clean. You got a simple sans serif font here, and then the technology that you can use in Photoshop to be able to create this type of a look that represents somewhat similar to the, the logo of Pepsi. And then the new designs of the digital age has become extreme without traditional clean digital look. So it can be clean, but it can also take on the layered creativity that you get from Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. So today's designers have learned to use digital tools to create a messy, chaotic, extreme, absurd, layered, illegible, unstable, and expressive look. And somehow they break all the rules and make it work. So you can see like in this one where you've got a man in the background and then you have a layer of the circle above him, above that, and then you have another um, collection of text and some couple of pictures of these multiple different layers. So, so too you have in here, you have this graphic in the background and the dotted lines and stuff that are even behind that. And then you have typography on top of that. So multiple different layers. These are the type of effects that you can get when you use the Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign because they are very heavily dependent on the, um, on the layering. So graphic design, oops, graphic design is a balance between industrial precision, organized chaos, and total inspiration. As with cultures around the world, graphic design around the world has a wide range of differences as you've seen with the different slides and stuff that we've already seen. Okay, so here we have the different, um, this is the, the halftone screens again, now they're getting tighter. So instead of only 100 dots per inch, now we're up to 300 dots per inch. And that's what our yearbooks are printed at. 
this video you should have access to to be able to play it and there are um, questions on the next slide that we'll give you that we'll, that you need to answer with that but this um, here is how you see how the different screens are put at an angle so this as it's smaller right here it makes it so it's a little bit easier to be able to see but obviously this is still even enlarged from what it was so um, 0 degrees 15 degrees 45 and 75 so from here um, on the next screen on yours you should have a uh, collection of different questions that you need to answer using the information that you get from this video.